Wolfsburg. And so, please. Okay. Uh, thanks. So the last talk about neural corner slate. So here I won't get too much detail about the mean SR derivations and all, and all those details about neural corner slates. I will give a comprehensive talk about uh, the recent progress of neural corner slates and what lead us to do the mean, as, mean SR method. So first, first I want to talk about why we use neural networks to express quantum slates. And as we know, the the, constant, uh, the neural network has been applied to many machine learning problems, and I want to use these machine learning examples to show why is the, why is it also reasonable to apply neural networks on the quantum antibody problems. So here is the first example about the image recognition. For example, if we want to use neural network to classify images, uh, we can do do it like this. We take some image as the input and the neural network take it as the first layer, and after many layers of, of forward pass, the, ne the network can finally tell us some probability. Here we say the probability is, uh, we define the probability to be uh, the, probabil the probability of this image being a cat. And of course we can have some other input image, and the neural network can give us some other probability. And if the neural network is well chained, this, this probability will will very well reflect the nature of the input image. So this is one example, and here I want to give another example about the game of Go. I guess you are probably, you, ha you probably have heard of the AlphaGo. So one thing we can do in neural network is that we can take the game status in AlphaGo, uh, we can get, take the game status in the game of Go and, take, and put it into the neural network. And then the neural network will tell us like, how likely is the player going to play, going to win the game? And also, if you are familiar with the game of Go, you may know that this game is a very long-range entangled game. It's like when you put some pieces on one corner of the game, you can significantly influence the game in some other corners. So this is a bit similar to some other quantum systems like uh, like quantum spin liquid. So based on these two applications, we can see that the neural network can really do well in learning some probability distributions in some uh, traditional tasks. So it makes a lot of sense for us to apply this also to the quantum antibody problem. And the quantum, quantum antibody problem can be uh, formulated as this. Uh, we, here we take a spin one half system as an example. We can take the spin configuration sigma as the input. And here you can see we take spin up as the black color and spin down as the white color. So it becomes really similar to the, to the image recognition task or the game of Go. So it's not hard to imagine that the neural network can also do well in this problem and give, give us some nice output. Here we take the, the output as the wave function per side. And for some other spin configurations, it will give us some other wave function outputs. So in the end, the, the whole quantum state can be constructed in this way. And there is a difference in the quantum antibody problem. Here you can see the wave function is not always positive. It can also be negative. So it's quite different from traditional machine learning tasks because usually in machine learning, we only learn a probability distribution, but here we, only, we also need to learn the signs. And this is called the sign problem in quantum systems. This is a very, a very fundamental problem in quantum systems. And I will also talk about this problem later. So anyway, it's not, it's, we can very well expect that the neural network can be applied to some simple quantum systems. Uh, here, is, uh, here is the famous paper uh, by Joseph Collier and Matthias Troyer. And they use a very simple one-layer restricted Boltzmann machine 
it's a very simple network uh, to ch to learn the to learn the Heisenberg uh, to learn the Heisenberg antiferromagnetic in the in the screw lattice. Here you can see they can reduce the variational error to a level much less. Uh, uh, it's not much less, but it's 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 better than the tensor narrow methods. So this is a very nice first attempt on on the neural neural quantum state, uh, but this. Heisenberg model is uh, doesn't have a sign problem. Its sign structure can be exactly solved. So in this work, they don't solve the sign problem. The neural network just learn a probability. But anyway, it's a very good result, and we can expect that the neural network may be able to also give us give us some interesting results uh, in those complex system with the sign problem, because those are interesting systems. Uh, in this Heisenberg model without the sign problem. It can be solved by some other methods like quantum and color to a very high accuracy. So if we want to really use neural quantum state to learn something beyond what we can have from the traditional methods, it's important to go to the frustrated model. So that's what we, that's the main topic of neural quantum state in the past five years. And I will talk about what we do in the past five years and what's the difficulty and what lead us to the method of mean SR. So the first attempt is on the frustrated J1, J2 model. In this model, it's, it's, a, it's a frustrated model with sign problem because of the J2 interaction. And the first attempts are based on the convolutional neural network. So this is their original energy they obtained at the time. Here you can see the, the energy is not too bad. You can compare it to the, to the ground state energy. Uh, it's accurate up to the third digit, but you can also see that it's not as good as traditional methods like DMRG or traditional variational Monte Carlo. So it doesn't give us something new. Uh, it, it doesn't outperform traditional methods, and probably because of the sign problem. Uh, and here are some other papers showing that maybe the sign problem is a very hard problem for neural quantum state. Here's the paper. Uh, basically, what they did in this paper is that they chained the neural network in one small portion of the Hilbert space, and they want to see whether the learned wave function can be generalized to the full Hilbert space. And you can see here that the generalization is not good for large J2, which means, uh, which means uh, the large J2 means uh, the system is strongly frustrated, and the system has a, a non-trivial sign problem. So you can see the amplitudes for large J2 are not too bad. Uh, the accuracy can be around 90% or 80%, but the signs were quite bad. The signs are basically zero accuracy, which means the signs learned by the neural network can't be generalized to the full Hilbert space. And although, although this is a work on the supervised learning, it can also be very, a very big problem for variational Monte Carlo. Because in Monte Carlo study, what, what we can do is to generate some Monte Carlo samples and the number of Monte Carlo samples is very, very small compared with the full Hilbert space. So anyway, we, we need to expect that the, the wave function learned by the neural quantum state can be generalized to the full Hilbert space. But this paper shows that it, it seems that doesn't work. So this is a very severe problem for the neural quantum state. And on the other hand, uh, we can also do some other tests to verify this conclusion. We can see. Uh, here I show a result given by the simple sign rule limit. Uh, here the simple sign rule is the Marshall sign rule. It's an, uh, it's an approximate sign rule for neural quantum state in the, uh, in the square 10 by 10 lattice. And this sign rule is, uh, is an approximation. It's not exact. It can be, so it can be um, obtained and it can be uh, written down and applied manually, but it's, it's not an accurate is that not an accurate sign structure? So here you can see the CNN energy is not as good as the simple sign rule limit, which means basically the sign structures in CNN was basically wrong. It doesn't learn any sign structure. And that means the wave functions provided by the shallow CNN was, was bad. It doesn't uh, give us a reliable sign structure. It, it doesn't give us a reliable wave function. So this seems to suggest that the neural quantum state can't learn the sign structure, but the question is, is it a fundamental limit to the neural quantum state or did we make some mistakes? 
So the answer I want to give here is that we really made some mistakes. The problem here is usually we separate the amplitudes and signs in neural network, but that's, that's a bad choice. Here I show a traditional architecture for most neural column state applications. Um, usually people, people uh, as, we know, as we know, the neural network is good at learning the probability. And it's, so in the beginning, people just feel uh, we, we, ha we can have an amplitude network only for the probability or, uh, or a positive amplitude. And we have another sign, ne sign error only for the sign structures. And if we do a product of them, we can expect that it will give us a good wave function. And you can see I'm also one of these people working on this direction. And I worked on this for many years, but I gradually feel that this was a very bad choice. And I will give you a very simple example to illustrate why this is bad. So here I draw a function. It's a function of signs. It can have values minus one or plus one. So now I want to ask you how, if, if you need to, need to extrapolate this function to the right, how would you expect, how, how would you extrapolate this function? You may think, uh, you may feel it makes, it seems to make sense to, to extrapolate this function in this way, right? It, it seems to make sense, but actually the function should be extrapolated like this. So you may feel it doesn't make any sense. Why is this extrapolation more reasonable than the previous one? And now I will show you, uh, show you the full function with both amplitudes and signs. Here is the full function, and with this function, it's not hard to, to guess that the function should be extrapolated like this. So what I want to say here is that when we separate the amplitude and signs, it will lose a lot of information in the wave function, and it will break the underlying tendency of the wave function. So this is just a very uh, illustrative example. It's, it, it's a continuous case which is different from our wave function, but, uh, but anyway, it can show that when we separate the amplitudes and signs, we are, made, we are making uh, big mistakes. So, so I want to say this choice is wrong, and, um, and this, so it, it's not a, I want to say it's not a problem of, of, of machine intelligence. It's actually a problem of our human intelligence. We are letting the new never learn something which is impossible to learn. And also, I want to mention that I, I didn't see any paper saying that it's definitely wrong to do this. I, it's just my personal understanding. So furthermore, the, across these years, there are also a lot of progress on the design of neural networks. So in the beginning, people thought maybe a problem in neural corner state is that we didn't do good sampling because anyway, in Markov chain Monte Carlo, what we can do is only correlated samples and we want to find, find a way to do uncorrelated samples and this is done by the autoregressive network and the recurrent neural network. Uh, but gradually, I, I found this is not the optimal choice because they, these networks will break the translational symmetry, and due to their architecture, it will be very hard to restore the translational symmetry. And then people found that it's actually very important to do a suitable symmetry projection. And these two papers shows that um, if we do the symmetry project, if we do the symmetry projection in a good way, we can actually obtain a very accurate wave function, even though the network is very simple. And in these two years, there are also a lot of progress on the design of network architecture. For example, the group convolutional neural network and the vision transformer. These are both very good architecture. And in the end, after so many years of effort, we are in a point that we want to see the neural network really produce something beyond traditional method. And, and uh, the philosophy to give a final kick to make the neural network better than other methods is, a very, is the simple philosophy. Uh, more is different. It's not only, it's all, not only a thing in, in condensed matter physics, it's all, also uh, a rule in deep learning. So we can, very, we can very well imagine that if we have more and more parameters in our neural network, it can, this 
enormous new neuron connections can somehow capture those quantum information and quantum features in the, in the quantum systems, and we will be able to obtain more and more accurate quantum, con, uh, more and more accurate quantities we want to measure. And the idea of deeper neural quantum states with more and more parameters actually have been proposed in the early years of neural quantum states. Here you can see in these two papers in 2017 and 18, we can see that they propose that in deep Boltzmann machines, it can do much better. It can have much better ex expressive power compared with the one layer uh, restricted Boltzmann machine. And also in 2022, there is also another paper showing that they spent quite a lot of effort on training a very deep neural quantum state with around 10 to 5 parameters, and they finally achieve a very nice energy in, the, in this prototypical model. So this energy, it, you can see, is not as good as traditional rational Monte Carlo, but it can get better than the simple sign rule limit. So this also verifies my claim before. This, uh, neural, ne this neural quantum state is actually able to learn the sign structure. And if we have a deep network with a lot of parameters and we chain it in a suitable way, it will be able to learn the sign structure. And, sorry, water, I drink some water. So, so we can expect that the neural network can become more and more accurate if we keep increasing the amount of parameters. But the problem here is that the training complexity of neural quantum state is actually very high. And I will explain why this is a problem, and I will then introduce our mean SR method. Here, I won't give a very detailed, a very formulated derivation. I will just do some hand-waving derivations so that you can, you can understand why is the optimization very, why is the optimization very difficult for neural quantum state and, and how to obtain the mean SR method. So here, in neural quantum state, what we can change is the parameters data, and we want to change, we, what we want to tune is the wave function psi, and these two quantities are related by this partial derivative. And on the other hand, the change of wave function we, we want it to be given by this gradient descent in the Hilbert space. Here, partial e partial psi will give us the, the, gradient, the gradient descent direction to minimize the energy. So this is the formula we, we have, and uh, I want to simplify it by introducing some notations. Here, partial psi partial theta is a Jacobian matrix. Here, I give a name matrix A. And on the other hand, on the right hand side, this this is a matrix. Uh, this matrix, uh, sorry, this is a vector which can be computed by rational Monte Carlo, and I give you a name B. And this delta theta is the quantity we want to solve, and I give a name X. So finally, it becomes a very simple linear equation: A X equal to B. And in order to solve this linear equation, it's very important to know what's the shape of A. And the shape I show here, uh, because A is a, is a Jacobian matrix, its, it's shape should be, uh, should be the number of samples and S times the number of parameters and P. And for deep neural quantum states, it's usually a good choice to have number of samples much less than the number of parameters. So we can see that this A is a very wide matrix, and this is actually a, a over-determined, this, uh, this is an underdetermined. Linear, linear equation. So to solve, this, so to solve this linear equation, there are, are some standard ways you can find in textbooks. Here, the method I use is the pseudo-inverse method, which means we obtain the x vector, which will give us the minimum residual error, and also this, the length of this, this vector x should be minimized. This is, uh, this is the property of pseudo-inverse. And here you can see there are two ways to obtain this pseudo inverse. The way in the middle uh, is the SR method. In this method, the important part is the matrix A dagger A. And you can see the 
size of this matrix is np times np. So imagine we have a very deep network with like one million parameters, then this, the shape of this matrix will be one million times one million. And to, to perform this matrix in words, it will be, it will be very expensive. The complexity is, is proportional to np cubed. But on the other hand, we can also solve this equation by the right-hand side equation. And then the matrix here has a shape of only an S times an S, so it's now independent of NP. And the complexity is only proportional to NP. This method is our mean SR method, and it can greatly reduce the complexity of doing mean SR, of doing neural corner state optimization. So now we have, we have the method to chain a very deep neural corner state. And now I want to show the results with benchmark model. Here the model is still the, the frustrated J1, J2 model. But in the beginning, I want to show some results in, the J, in J2 equal to zero case. Uh, this result has been shown by Filippo in his talk. And here you can see when we increase the number of parameters, the relative error will reduce. And finally, it will, it will achieve a level of 10 to minus seven. And it's around 1,000 times better than the best previous result. And on the other hand, this is uh, our recent result on the, on the frustrated case. And in this work, you can see this purple curve. We can reach, we, we can reach more than one million parameters and the rational error is better than all other existing methods. And here is our variational energy. You can see here that uh, the, the variational energy is better than the traditional method and it's very, very close to the ground state energy. Uh, yeah, uh, one part is that we use the mean SR method to chain a deeper network, and on the other hand, we also spend quite a lot of time to design a good network. Uh, for if we use RBM, that that's unlikely to work out because you can see in the left panel here, uh, when we increase the number of parameters, the the variational energy doesn't reduce a lot. So we can expect that if we keep increasing the number of if we keep increasing the number of parameters, it will somehow saturate. So one layer RBM is not enough, but uh, if you have more layers. It's, it, it, it's likely to work out. I'm not sure, I, I don't want, sorry, I'm not, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, we can chat later. <laughs> okay, now, um, and, and we can, I've shown that we really have a method to outperform traditional method in the spin system. So I want to show some, some new physics based on this method. The application I want to show here is about the quantum spin liquid. So the first step is, is that we want to obtain the energy gaps of the quantum spin liquid. As we know, as I have introduced in the, in the J1, J2 frustrating model, uh, actually there, was a, there is a quantum spin liquid phase as shown by this paper. And also in the triangular lattice, there is also a quantum spin liquid phase in this J1, J2 model. So uh, the existence of, this, of the quantum spin liquid phase has been verified by many papers but we want to, what we want to see here is whether this quantum spin liquid phase are, are gapped or gapless. So what we did here is that we measure the energy gaps for, for different system sizes and we extrapolate to infinite system size. Here we do simulations on square lattice with, with 20 by 20 lattice 
and uh, with up to 20 by 20 lattice, 20 by 20 size, and uh, on on triangular lattice we do up to 18 by 18 sides, and you can see here that that when we go to the thermodynamic limit at a wrong, at one over L equal to zero, it becomes the the energy gaps vanishes. So in your so the neural corner state method suggests that suggests that in these systems there are there are gapless quantum spin liquid phase. What's more, we can also measure the structure factors in these systems. So here is the spin structure in the in the case space. You can see there are some high peaks in the corner of the case space. That means we have a, we have a spin order in the in the system. But when we increase the increase the value of J2, which means when we increase the frustration, the spin order will be suppressed, and you can see the peak of the corner becomes not so high. And also we can also measure the dimer structure order, and here you can see from the scale of the color map, it's actually not very strong, and when we increase the J2 frustration, it doesn't increase a lot. So we can expect that for small J2, there is a spin ordered phase, and for large J2, it's likely to be a featureless corner spin liquid phase. This, also, this is also shown by this, uh, this map, of, by this plot of correlation ratio. Basically, what, what, we, what this quantity shows is that is how strong are the peaks in the structure factor. So here we can see that for, in, we can see in the spin correlation ratio that for small J2, it's strong, and for large J2, it's weaker. And at, there is also a crossing point at around J2 equal to 0 0.06, which means it's likely to be a quantum phase transition point. And for small J2, it's a, it's a spin ordered phase, and for large J2, it's a quantum spin liquid phase. So finally, I want to give a summary about my work. First, we first uh, across uh, during these many years of studies on neural quantum states, uh, we've gradually realized that the previous choice of the sign structure was not good, and it's better not to it's better not to separate the amplitudes and signs. And gradually, we learn better network designs from other paper, and finally, we propose the mean SR method, which allows us to chain very deep neural quantum states. And finally, based on all these improvements, we are now able to chain a very, very deep network with one million parameters and obtain the state of the art, obtain the state of the art accuracy, and uh, outperform existing method, and uh, and and then we can do some simulations on the quantum spin liquid to produce something interesting. And in the end, I also want to. Uh, talk about some outlooks of neural quantum states. So as I have said, on the quantum spin liquid problem, the neural network can be applied to obtain something different. And this is a very good playground for the neural quantum state because now the DMRG method uh, or the traditional VMC are not as good as, or anyway, and, and in our experiments, they are not as good as neural quantum states. So we can expect that neural network can do something different in the system. And also, on the fermionic lattice, the neural network can also make a, make a difference. Mm. The fermionic lattice, like the Harvard model, are basically the simplest model to, to explain what's happening in most condensed matter systems. So if we can really use neural network to learn what's happening in the fermionic lattice, we will have better, much better understanding about the condensed matter systems like, like superconductivity. And what's more, we can also apply the neural network on the quantum chemistry problem as has been, has been introduced by the last talk. So in, this, in the quantum chemistry problem, the neural network can learn the electronic structures in the molecules and atoms. And if you are interested in this problem, uh, I, I would suggest you to read this, uh, this review paper on nature, re on nature review chemistry. 
And what's more, the, there's also another important problem about quantum dynamics. Because the traditional quantum dynamics methods are like uh, basically uh, exact diagonalization or tensor network method. So in this method, there are quite a lot of problems like, like in tensor network methods, the entanglement is, is limited. But if we can apply the neural network on this problem, we can, um, we can really make a, we can make a much better simulation on the quantum dynamics. But of course, there are also still some technical details, some technical difficulties in these problems, and uh, there are still a lot to do. So in order to solve all these problems, including quantum spin liquid, from from only like this, quantum, chem quantum chemistry and quantum dynamics, uh, it's very important to design a good neural network. So one idea is to encode the physical backgrounds like like uh, like uh, mean field fermions into our neural network function, and this will be, uh, for my in my opinion, this will be a very important next step. And there are also some more directions that we can work on. And we, I can I can't list all the possible directions and directions. And the the neural quantum state is a very open field that there are maybe a lot of other other directions that we can also produce very interesting results. And this will require uh, the efforts of all of us. So, so thank you for your attention. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> thanks. So thank you for the very nice talk. Uh, my question might be actually similar to the one that uh, he was asking before, but I don't, I'm not sure about that. I'm going to try to reformulate. So uh, can you please take the slide where you are uh, doing this pseudo inverse uh, thing? So. Um, my question is, I can see that you have, uh, uh, let's say, computational gain by trading the number of parameters uh, for the number of samples, right? Because in the regime that you're interested, the number of uh, parameters is very large, so it's very much more difficult to do this uh, thing on the left. But is the update uh, in the descent uh, the same in the two cases? Uh, if you fix an architecture and you're actually able to carry out both of the methods? Can, can I make myself clear? Uh, sorry, uh, you mean? So the S R and the mean SR, if you fix an architecture yeah, yeah. for which you're able to do both cases, uh, in yeah. the end of the day, you're going to have the same update rule, right? Yeah, they are mathematically equivalent. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's a matter of computational efficiency, right? Yeah. OK. It's only about efficiency. It's not about accuracy. OK. Okay, thank you. Just Hi. Well, um, maybe I missed uh, which gap are you computing in the triangular lattice? Uh, these two gaps I mark here. The here, K and M are the, are the uh, K vector. Uh, and uh, this A1 is the rotation. But this is the triplet gap? Yeah. And A, A1 minus, what does it mean? You, A1 you minus, minus means uh, it's, the, there is a, uh, there is a total. But this is, the, this is the smallest gap on the six by six, for instance, for the triplet, or not? Uh, on six by six, I, I'm not sure. Oh, this is I'm the wondering if this is the, the lowest gap uh, you have to compute for the, uh, the antiferromagnetic state. Uh, I'm not sure. This is, this is the gap for a total spin equal to 1, the smallest gap for total spin equal to 1, for s equal to 1. It's the gap for Hamilton. Okay, but so this, okay. So square means it's a gap, it's gapless at pi pi. M means what? M usually means pi zero. Let's say uh, in, in condensed. I think it's pi pi. Pi pi. Yeah. It's pi pi. Pi pi. Yeah. And for, this is for the triplet. Yeah. yeah. And can you compute gaps for the singlet sector? 
Yeah, well, uh, I think we can, and, and actually in Chris' paper, he shows some results, but I didn't compute. I, I just compute uh, this, this gap. Second question is about the, the other slide, if you can go. Which one? To the, to the next uh, one. Structure factor, right? Yeah, um, why the dimer structure breaks the symmetry? What, what kind of dimer-dimer correlation are you taking? Uh, this is because the dimer is chosen in the x direction. So it's dimer-dimer like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dimer-dimer in the x direction. Other questions? Maybe you have a question, and uh, on the triangular lattice, there is no... Uh, Which lattice? In the, tri in the triangular lattice, the, uh, there is no uh, an equivalent of Marshall sign rule. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's more complicated, but uh, did you apply some prior on the sign structure in that case, or just an unbiased simulation? Uh, I, I, apply, uh, I apply sign rule. This is the sign rule for uh, for small J2, this you can see for small J2 there is also a spin order, and the spin order can also show a sign rule, and I, I apply the sign rule. Okay. Yeah. It's like Marshall sign rule in structure okay, okay. like this. Thank you. Um, you argued that like taking different networks for amplitude and phase is bad. Do you think the same is also true if I have like uh, like the same architecture for amplitude and phase but different output layers, or do you think the only like solution would be a complex network? Uh, I mean this one. Okay, I I think you I mean you have one network, but for both amplitude and signs, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think in this case it can work. Uh, I, I'm not so sure, but it's, it's, I think it's also better not to separate them. But if it's a single network, that's possible to work. Okay, so, but in your opinion, it's the best to have a complex network? Or? Yeah, or, or you have a real one, but with plus or minus signs. That's also mm -hmm. possible. Okay, thanks. Uh, other questions? If not, we can say thanks to the speaker again. Yeah.